A woke professor in Texas has been suspended. It's March 5th, 2024, and these are your headlines. As you can see, if you're watching right now, we're getting ready, set up for our election night coverage tonight after the polls close at nine o'clock, we're gonna be coming to you live on X, on YouTube, wherever you watch Texas Scorecard, we're gonna be talking about some of the election results as they roll in. I'll talk more about that in just a few moments, but first, our top story today, a professor at Texas Tech University who publicly posted anti-Semitic remarks has been suspended. Jairo Funes Flores is an assistant professor at Texas Tech's College of Education. He specializes in decolonial studies, ethnography, and activist research. In fact, the university recognized him uh, in the 2022-2023 academic year with the Hemphill Wells New Professor Excellence in Teaching Award. Well, recently, Texas Scorecard reported on a series of anti-Semitic social media posts made by Funes Flores in which he publicly cursed Israel and the United States along with heavy use of profanity. On October 7th of last year, the day of the terrorist attacks against Israel, he posted the following quote on X from Palestinian poet Darren Tator. He said, resist my people, resist them in Jerusalem. I dressed my wounds and breathed my sorrows and carried the soul in my palm for an Arab Palestine. I will not succumb to the peaceful solution. Never lower my flags until I evict them from my land. Now that same day, he also shared a post justifying those same terrorist attacks as self-determination, resisting dehumanization and justice. Now the university has suspended the professor due to the post, which leadership has characterized as hateful, anti-Semitic and unacceptable. Yesterday, the university shared a statement on behalf of Texas Tech University President Lauren Chauvinick, Lawrence Chauvinick and Chancellor Ted Mitchell. They said that Assistant Professor Jairo Funes Flores posted a series of social media comments that we find to be hateful, anti-Semitic, and unacceptable. These social media comments are antithetical to our values. We take the First Amendment's application to public universities seriously. However, we are also committed to providing a safe learning and working environment that is free from harassment, including anti-Semitic harassment, and will not tolerate behavior that crosses the line into harassment and interferes with or limits the ability of an individual to participate in the educational activities of Texas Tech University. As a result, the university has suspended him with pay right now pending the result of further investigation. Parents in persistently mismanaged Marlin Independent School District are fighting back after a state senator's law firm threatened two moms with a defamation lawsuit for publicly complaining about the district. Marlin ISD mothers Monica Johnson and Brandilyn Jones filed a federal civil rights lawsuit accusing the district, its superintendent, and the ISD police chief of attempting to intimidate their families into silence and deter others from speaking up. It all began last year when Marlin ISD superintendent Daryl Henson change those mothers high achieving children's grades and class rankings after the 2023 school year ended, adversely impacting the students' college plans. Henson also postponed the district's graduation ceremony at the last minute, saying that only five high school seniors were eligible to graduate. Starting in June, Johnson and Jones filed grievances with the district about Henson changing grading and class rank policies retroactively just before graduation. They also, they also publicly complained at par uh, parent meetings and on social media. Now, supported by Texas Education 911, which is a grassroots group that advocates for parental rights and public education, Jones also sought help from several state legislators, including State Senator Royce West, a Dallas Democrat who's a member of the Senate Education Committee. Well, 10 days later, West's law firm sent letters to Jones & Johnson on behalf of the district, instructing those moms to immediately cease and desist from publishing any additional defamatory statements against Marlin ISD and Dr. Henson on social media. The families are seeking compensatory and punitive damages in their lawsuit. Marlin ISD, by the way, is located uh, just southeast of Waco in Falls County and has Three schools serving fewer than 1,000 students. 99% of those students are economically disadvantaged. The district has been governed by a state-appointed board of managers all the way back since 2017 due to multiple consecutive years of unacceptable academic accountability ratings. 
The Luke Messia Show is your access to what happens behind closed doors in Texas politics. Listen weekly to me, your host, Luke Macias, as I break down what is actually happening in conservative politics in the Lone Star State, a state that we all love and cherish. Listen weekly wherever you listen to podcasts. This show is a product of Texas Corporate. Last up, it's probably the biggest story of today, or at least will be tonight and into the days ahead. Today is the primary elections here in Texas. We're going to be talking about a lot of those results, as I mentioned, on our live stream at 9 o'clock. You can catch it on X, on Facebook, on YouTube, at Texas Scorecard, where me and Michael Quinn Sullivan are going to be going through the results as they come in, and more importantly, what it means for the future of the Texas legislature, what it means for priorities heading into the next legislative session, what it means for you, for Texans. We're going to be covering all of that. You're not going to want to miss it. Some of those big races we're going to be covering tonight would, of course, be the race where you see House Speaker Dade Phelan challenged not just by one, but two different candidates. In fact, he has big endorsements against him. President Donald Trump, for example, Attorney General Ken Paxton. Attorney General Paxton, of course, has endorsed a slew of challengers in the House, Governor Greg Abbott has entered some of those races as well, taking the unusual step of endorsing against some incumbent Republicans. These are just a few of the things that we're going to be talking about and watching. So be sure tonight, 9 o'clock, to catch us on our live stream where we talk about all of these at Texas Scorecard. And for more of today's news, go to texasscorecard.com.